So let us pray. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our scripture reading for this evening, the first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. The entire commandment that I command you today you must diligently observe so that you may live and increase and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a parent disciplines a child, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs, and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whom, whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill, and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And then a reading from the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome to our fourth midweek Lenten service. We started this Lenten season with focusing on the spiritual discipline of worship and prayer. And then we moved to the discipline of study, or listening and paying attention. And last week, we focused on the discipline of serving. And this week, we're all about giving. Of course, this service looks different than our other Lenten services this year. We are recording this service in a mostly empty sanctuary. We are missing the voices of our congregation. We are missing your presence here. I want to acknowledge that what we are doing right now in this community and in our nation and in the world is hard. We are dealing with sickness, we are dealing with uncertainty. We are dealing with physical distancing and the feelings of isolation that come along with that. We are dealing with disruption and the disappointment that comes along with that. We are grieving. This is not easy. You are not alone. We are in this together. In this community, in this church, People are ready to help. Volunteers are ready to deliver groceries and medicine. And others are making calls and checking in. And 
still others are creating cards and putting them in the mail. And this week, your church leadership has been busy figuring out the best way to continue with worship opportunities and faith formation activities. So look for more to be rolled out as we continue to navigate these uncharted waters together. Let me say it one more time. This is not easy, and you are not alone. So now turning to a lighter note, we'll move to our focus for this fourth week of Lent, giving money. In all seriousness, ever since things began to change rather rapidly last week, I've been wondering how to preach on giving money in a time of pandemic. How can I deliver a message about giving when it seems like so much is being taken from us? When businesses are being shut down, when people are being laid off or asked not to work, when the cost of necessities like sanitizer and toilet paper are skyrocketing, when our daily routines have been disrupted, when our ability to come and go as we please has been restricted, when we have to substitute an in-person visit with a phone call. And then I recall the story that Adam Hamilton told this week on his chapter on giving in The Walk. It was one of the stories about Victor Franco, the man who developed the theory of logotherapy, the idea that human beings who find a sense of meaning in their lives deal better and with bleak situations. Now for Frankel, this was personal. He claimed that his love for his wife kept him going through the bleakest of human experiences for Nazi concentration camps. He later wrote that he had come to believe that the salvation of man is through love and in love. So maybe, just maybe in this time where it feels like we are giving up so much, maybe that giving will save us. Giving will save our hearts from our feelings of isolation and from despair. I think this may have been what Jesus is saying to us today when he says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and destroy and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is calling us to give ourselves, our time, and our resources to things that last, things like faith and hope and love. Jesus is calling us to invest in people first before we invest in a volatile market of things. Jesus is calling us to tend to our hearts by sharing our treasure with others. Now, I like the questions that Adam Hamilton poses in his chapter on giving. He writes about a rhythm of giving. Are you stingy with your tips? Do you try to give people down to the absolute rock bottom when negotiating a purchase? Or do you find a fair price for both the seller and for you? Do you give generously when there is someone in need? Do you resent being asked for money, either by your church or by others? Or do you look forward to being asked and having the opportunity to give? And I think these are wonderfully practical questions that help us reflect on our heart and our practice of giving. But in this unprecedented time of closures and distancing, I've got a few questions of my own to add. Are you continuing to purchase from small businesses so that your neighbor still gets a paycheck? Are you tipping generously when you pick up your takeout food so that local businesses can stay in business? Are you donating the money you've already paid for an event that has since been canceled? Are you continuing 
need to give to organizations that support people in a time of crisis? Are you finding ways to give above and beyond at this time when the need to invest in people is greater than ever? And I get it. It's hard. This feels like a time of scarcity. There aren't enough hospital beds, test kits, or nurses. The store shelves are empty of sanitizer and toilet paper. Bank accounts may be empty, too. And yet, as people of God, we live in abundance. God provided manna in the wilderness. God provided enough for each day. And on the sixth day, God provided enough for two days so that the people would not have to gather on the Sabbath. God continues to provide for us. God gives us community. And sometimes that community is in person, and sometimes, like now, it's online or via phone. God continues to care for us, sometimes in the form of a hug, and sometimes, as in now, in the form of a neighbor dropping off groceries. God continues to love us. Sometimes that love shows up in person, and sometimes it's through sincere thoughts and prayers. God's love is here, and there is enough for all of us to share. Several years ago, I was visiting some ministry partners in the eastern African country of Tanzania. And there, I witnessed the most beautiful gift of giving, the act of giving, that I have ever seen. During worship, the time came to gather the offering, and they passed the plate around through the past worship space, and then they came forward and set it on the altar. I thought we were done. We were ready to move on to the next part of worship. But I was wrong. The people began to file forward to the altar, setting down produce, eggs, chickens, fabric and homemade goods, a pot of stew, a goat. And this went on for a good 15 minutes before we returned to the liturgy. Following the service, all the offerings were gathered and moved outside and auctioned off. Those that had money gave an offering, and then they bid more to purchase the items that others had brought in. Those that had no money gave what they had to be auctioned off. The offering and the auction were a celebration of giving. People sang and danced and then they shared the bananas and the stew that they had just purchased. Giving brought them joy. May it be so for you and for me when the giving is hard. May it be so when the giving is easy. May it be so because we were first given the best gift ever, the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may it be so, because giving might save our hearts in a time when it's easy to despair. May the joy of giving be ours. Amen. We're going to continue with him.